we're going to be focusing on the brand new AN94, which is unlocked at tier 31 in the season five battle pass. There's a bunch of different things I want to talk about recoil pattern, how to maximize that rate of fire because it is a two burst weapon. Some people are thinking, hey, if you just spam it, do you actually get a faster rate of fire? And we're going to look at how it compares to a lot of the other weapons for both multiplayer as well as Warzone. We're going to cover a bunch of various attachments, what they do, and hopefully give you a better idea on how to make the best class setup possible for your own individual play style and how you actually want to use the weapon overall. A lot of times in Warzone, you have to figure out whether or not you want to stack a weapon with a sniper rifle or to stack it with an SMG if you're going to be able to use it as your long range option. So we're going to discuss all that in today's video. If you do enjoy the video or find it helpful, please remember to hit that like button. Goal in today's video is 3,000 likes. Hopefully, you can help me hit that number. And if you're brand new looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, just make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Just a heads up, I also did link all my gear down in the description. I was kind of getting a lot of questions on what I use. I'll probably do a setup video down the road, but I thought I'd at least give you the links to the items that I'm currently using. Let's get into the breakdown. So obviously, we've already completed the weapon. We got that gold platinum Damascus going on already. Uh, pretty straightforward. I wish we had a better selection of maps, but that's a completely different story. So when you fire this weapon, two bullets come out immediately. You can't not do two bullets. Even if you put it to semi-auto, it'll still fire two bullets. Um, and that, like I said, causes a lot of debate. Should I just spam the trigger? And since two bullets are coming out, the fire rate on that's like over a thousand. So wouldn't that be faster than sticking to the 600 RPM that the normal gun has uh, while you're firing the weapon? The big issue with this gun, though, is if you do hold the trigger, obviously you're going to get sustained fire rate. So we can hold that, and you can see it's sustained. It keeps its momentum. What happens is if you try to do just burst, spam this, what will end up happening is there's a delay between one burst to the next. So they kind of wanted, that's kind of their way of balancing the weapon. See how inconsistent it is? Because the, there's a, a big delay in there. So even if you're spamming it fast, you're not going to be able to maximize that fire rate because of all those stops. The good thing about spamming the trigger is you're not going to get a faster fire rate, but you can see that the, the recoil pattern is relatively easy to control. Instead of it going up and to the right, which isn't too bad, that's kind of like the M4, which when we talk about the recoil patterns, you'll see. But overall, you can see right here, if I just spam the trigger... It just goes vertical pretty much. So that could be a little bit easier to manage, even though that's not necessarily how I'd recommend using this weapon. Now let's go ahead and talk about recoil pattern. So here's pretty much the base recoil pattern, uh, right? That we hear how we have on the left. You can see it's kind of done in orange. And then I back laid that behind the blue. So it's a little bit easier to spot the difference there of what the original recoil looks like. And then when you equip these individual attachments, obviously when you start stacking attachments, you do get a bonus effect which we'll end up seeing kind of how the end result looks on this weapon. But overall, you can see that we have the Sonic Break. is kind of helping out a little bit, but not a ton. Com compensator, doing some, you can see it kind of bunches it down because we have the, the blue dot there versus over here. We have the Commando, which is tightening it up a little bit less side to side. Merc is helping out, but it looks like in this case, the Merc, Ranger, and Operator are all doing about the same thing. So it's kind of really a matter of your preference. Most people will tend to go with the Merc because it has the extra mobility, uh, but also ends up helping out with the hip fire spread. So if you like those close quarters engagements, Merc could be a good way to go. Even though generally, I think for most rifles, people tend to stick with the Commando foregrip. It's really all about preference. Then we have the rubberized, which you can see here on the bottom left. Excuse my error on this one. I, I already saved it as a JPEG, so I can't change it. But right here, you can see that the rubberized isn't really helping at all. We have the folded stock, which is basically like collapsible stock and no stock. It's going to increase your recoil. So I actually put the orange one on top of the blue. And you can kind of see how much extra is actually happening in the recoil department. The VLK does look like it's helping a little bit, but it's kind of really hard to tell. It doesn't look like any more or less than like the Sonic or the Compensator. Um, and then we have the POS M3 Thermal, which is a different type of thermal. It ends up looking blue instead of the normal, like orangish one that we're used to seeing or the white grayed out one. Uh, but that one, again, doesn't look like it's doing much there. Now let's take a look at the damage values and what those distances look like when you're using max range attachment. So this is a screenshot that I was able to take to measure the various distances of how this is going to work. This will look a little bit small, I would imagine, 
on your screen. Even when I zoom in, it's going to continue trying to stretch it out. But either way, what we're looking at here is between 0 and 32 meters, it does various damages. Between 29 to 46, depending on if you hit in the limbs, the stomach, the chest, or a headshot. You get more damage the higher it goes um, and the precision required for that. Um, and basically a multiplayer, that means it's going to be a three to four shot to kill. In Warzone, it's going to be six to nine. Obviously six being only if you're landing headshots. Then once we go over here, you can see what 32 meters looks like on the right. I'm not really changing the scale, so you actually see what that looks like in game. And then we have that as um, between 32 to 50 meters, we're going to do between 24 up to 38 damage for those respective areas. In multiplayer, the shots to kill will be 3 to 5. In Warzone, will be 7 to 11 within that individual range. And this is going to make a little bit more sense once we show the next part. Um, so kind of stick along with me as I go through these. And then right around 50 meters, which is a sniper long shot in this game, it's 22 all the way up to 35 damage, um, all the way up to 63 meters. Uh, it'll be 8 to 12 shots, and in multiplayer, 3 to 5. Obviously, more commons probably going to be like 4 to 5 if you're mixing in a couple headshots in that area. Then we have from 63 plus, which is incredibly far. So this is the max range where it kind of starts to drop off and it becomes more of a potato gun. But that's, that's what we'll see once we get to the, the war zone aspect of it. It's going to do 18 to 29 damage. Um, and that's going to give us a war zone shots to kill of 9 to 14 and multiplayer 4 to 6, which more than likely you're going to end up being 5 to 6 shots to kill at those further ranges. So now that we have a visual perspective of what the damage drop-offs are, now let's look how it compares at 100 health and at 250 health against some of the most dominant guns currently in the game. All right, so here's a look at 100 health aiming for the chest. Uh, keeping in mind that most of these weapons on this list, it doesn't matter if you shoot them anywhere on the body, whereas with the AN and with the foul, you have to hit chest shots or stomach shots or headshots to get that additional damage. Um, whereas all these other guns with the 5.56, five, you have to land headshots. And this was obviously taken from codgundata.com and they've kind of compiled it all together there. So the first thing you'll notice when it comes to 100 health multiplayer, if you're aiming for the chest, the TTK is amazing. You're getting a very low TTK um, and then it kind of drops off, but it's still very competitive. The only thing close in core game modes right now is the foul with the exception unless you get that headshot. And right here you can see the foul drops off from a two shot up to a three shot um, and then it kind of maintains that all the way through as far as the rest of the damage you can see it goes very competitive and then when it finishes off it ends up having a faster ttk beyond about 85 90 meters um, because all these other ones decide to drop off right around this range that you end up with a ttk that is faster than the bruin than the kilo and then the m4a1 uh, but again this is core multiplayer so in Warzone, we get a drastically different situation here where the AN is one of the worst possible guns out of this selection. Obviously, up close, the foul is broken. We'll probably get nerfed. Uh, as far as the Bruin M4 goes, they're all pretty solid up close. Um, you end up with uh, some pretty good damage uh, values here. Obviously, the Bruin has a little bit more range because it is technically an LMG. And it kind of maintains its range a little bit further. But if we look at the orange one, which is this top line, the AN-94, it is terrible. All the way up to about that 32 meters that we were talking about. Then it drops off, and then it drops off again, and then again. And it is bad. It's never like the most like dominant gun uh, in here ever. It's never the best. It's better than some for like two or three meters here, two or three meters here. Maybe here it's better than the, the foul right there, but then that's it. it. It is a terrible war zone weapon. I know some people will say, like I got plenty of comments today when I tweeted out how bad the AN is. And some people were like, well, so-and-so got 35 kills with it. Well, all that means is they were in an easier lobby and they're a very good player. Obviously, if they were playing with money on the line, Almost no shot anyone's going to be using the AN. I could almost bet money you're not going to see that in a tournament unless it's from a losing team. Just throwing it out there. Uh, because if you're trying to put it out there, you're trying to be the best, you're not going to not use the best stuff, which obviously in these cases, MP5, foul for those close range engagements. Then like the Bruin, M4, Growl, Kilo are still pretty much the main top weapons that people are generally using. Sad thing about this is it's not going to change the meta at all within Warzone. Multiplayer, you can see a mix because of how good it is, like I said, in those particular areas. 
obviously that's one side of it. Now let's go ahead and take another look at the ADS speeds and how these weapons stack up once you've kind of already built some of those attachments towards actually playing the game. So here we go. I have them all stacked with kind of the class setups you probably use in Warzone. Um, you can see the ADS speeds are right in there, 410. It's not terrible. It's right there with the Kilo. People are fine using the Kilo, so that, that works out. The Foul, obviously, it, it puts in work, but the M4 is a great option. A little bit faster aim down sight time. As far as uh, movement speed, you can see that the fastest movement speed here is going to be the Foul out of all these particular options uh, and then we have the vertical recoil being cut down hip fire spread all those types of things the best hip fire spread is going to be on the foul out of all these weapons and then as far as bullet velocity they're all kind of even you're going to be able to hit your shots at range it's going to feel closer to hit scan because of the way the bullet drop works and that's pretty much how it goes pretty straightforward so now let's go ahead and talk about attachments because that's what people tend to want to know now that you kind of have an idea of how good and not good this weapon is you can better decide how it's going to fit your play style Obviously, when it comes to the different um, muzzles, you you pr typically want a suppressor. Um, if you want the, the best all-around range, you're typically going to go with the monolithic suppressor. It adds bullet velocity, so your bullets connect a little bit faster. Um, the other option is going to be the tactical suppressor. A little bit faster ADS. You don't get quite the penalty the monolithic does, but obviously you're not going to get that extra range or bullet velocity. If you're looking for the lowest recoil, you're probably going to go compensator, and that's pretty much how those work. Now let's go ahead and talk about the underbarrels. There's a lot of underbarrels, a lot of the things you can use here. Commando foregrip is generally the one you're going to go with just because it gives you the stabilization with the ADS time without having a penalty there. Whereas the Merc will impact your penalty and speed up your movement speed. So it's kind of one of those trade-offs that I was talking about when we we're talking about recoil. And that's pretty much it. I really wouldn't touch any of these. Uh, you want to avoid tactical foregrip at all costs. It's kind of one of the worst attachments in the game in addition to what we just saw over there with the, with the flash guard. So I wouldn't use that. Um, as far as ammunition go... You really got to judge it based off what you feel. I think overall, 45 is perfectly fine. 6v6, 10v10, you can get away with it. Ground War, you're probably going to want a 60. And in Warzone, you're definitely going to want the 60. Uh, barrels, I personally just like the range because obviously that's where you're going to be able to get those time to kill, but you're going to have to deal with the penalty of slower ADS time. You could get away with the Sila if you're if you're comfortable at hitting those shots at further ranges, but keep in mind that this one will definitely help with the bullet velocity as well as the recoil control, which will help it kind of keep in line um, as we're going to see in a sec what the what the recoil looks like after I've stacked the attachments. I generally don't use these ones. It might work in a 6v6 or a one-on-one -on -one type of scenario, s &D, when you're getting close quarters kind of a scenario. But in general, I wouldn't really do anything that's going to ruin your bullet velocity because that nerfs your range or messes up your recoil control, makes it harder for you to hit shots. Definitely a trade-off, but I would go with the, the, with the one right here, the 438. Uh, millimeter barrel normally i would go with the tack laser but this gun has some atrocious iron sights i don't know what they did but they gave this the worst possible iron sights for the an94 that i've ever seen um if you find with the iron sights or maybe they come out with the blueprint with cleaner iron sights i, I would go with the tack laser 100 percent but because of the terrible iron sights, I think uh, an optic is almost mandatory. Um, I was running majority of the time a GI mini reflex. I think since that damage drop off is so significant at those further ranges, like above, beyond about the 65 meter range that we talked about, I don't think the BLK is very practical because this is more than likely going to be your short range option and then or short to medium. And then you'll combine this with a sniper rifle. So it more fits that play style. If you're the running gun, you like to use like the MP5, MP7 or some kind of SMG or foul with the rifle. This this is not going to be the, the rifle for you. You probably want to go with Kilo, M13, those type of weapons because they balance a little bit, balance each other out a little bit better. Uh, but obviously that is a case by case. You do what works best for you. Um, but overall, I was going with the GI Mini Reflex just because of those terrible iron sights. Uh, rear grip, that kind of made up all my attachments. Um, you could do the folded stock if you're going to be running and gunning a little bit close quarters. Um, you could use that as a trade-off. But again, your iron sights are still going to be terrible. So you're going to need to figure out attachments somewhere. It's like, do you get rid of the barrel? Do you get rid of the, the suppressor? There, there's, there's, you're limited on options because of that iron sight situation. It's not like the Bruin where you cannot have an underbarrel. 
Um, but I guess you could in this case, it's just one of those trade-offs. Again, you gotta do what works best for you. So that is another option. And then you have the rear grip, which are all named like the normal grips, which stippled grip is generally where people go because of the sprint to fire and aim down sight speed. Um, if you have trouble with the reloading, you could do slide of hand, but I don't really see that as necessary. It does have a clean reload animation. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at that full class setup in action and show you exactly what that recoil pattern looks like. So here's the class setup I was talking about, the GI Mini 60 round. Commando foregrip, the AN94, uh, that long barrel that I was talking about, and then the monolithic suppressor. And you can see the various recoil patterns. We got the orange going over here, and you can see how tight this goes, and it becomes a laser beam. I know people are gonna argue, hey, you know, but it's a laser beam. We saw the damage stack side to side. I think this is perfectly fine for multiplayer, 6v6, 10v10, kind of stretching it, ground war, kind of stretching a little bit further, could still compete, but a little bit iffy at those further ranges. And then obviously in Warzone, I'm probably never going to touch again. Uh, but that's kind of how it ends up going. If you did enjoy the video, learn something new, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Also, a quick reminder, we still have a community Discord. If you guys are interested in joining up with other people from the community, getting wins, which people are messaging me on a daily basis about how their experience has been really positive, go ahead and check that out. Again, that's linked down in the description. Appreciate the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.